Good evening. Today we continue our daily reading of the Word. Today we are in the book of Judges, chapter 12. As always stated, prior to reading the Word, get to a church that has Bible study or Sunday school where the Word can be broken down and shared for you. Also, get with some friends who are just breaking the bread and having church and sharing the Word and get some understanding from one another. Uh, also, get a Bible that you can read, NIV, King James, um, there are numerous Bibles that you can get that are easier for you to read and understand. But most importantly and above all, call on the Lord and ask Him for wisdom. If you call on the Lord, He will answer and fill you up with His Word. Judges chapter 12. The Ephraimite forces were called out and they crossed over to Zephon. They said to Jephthah, Why did you go to fight with the Ammonites without calling us to go with you? We're going to burn down your house over your head. Jephthah answered, I and my people were engaged in a great struggle with the Ammonites, and although I called, you didn't save me out of their hands. When I saw that you wouldn't help, I took my life in my hands and crossed over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave me the victory over them. Now why have you come up today to fight me? Jephthah then called together the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim. The Gileadites struck them down because the Ephraimites had said, The Gileadites are renegades from Ephraim and Manasseh. The Gileadites captured the fords of the Jordan leading to Ephraim, and whenever a survivor of Ephraim said, Let me cross over, the men of Gilead asked him, Are you an Ephraimite? If he replied, No, they said, All right, say Shiboleth. If he said Shiboleth because he could not pronounce the word correctly, they seized him and killed him at the, for at the fords of the Jordan. 42,000 Ephraimites were killed at that time. Jephthah led Israel six years, then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried in a town in Gilead. After him, Isban of uh, Bethlehem led Israel. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He gave his daughters away in marriage to those outside his clan, and for his sons, he brought in 30 young women, his wives from outside his clan. Ibzan led Israel seven years, then Ibzan died and was buried in Bethlehem. After him, Elon the Zebulonite led Israel ten years. Then Elon died and was buried in Ajelon, in the land of Zebulun. After him, Abdon, son of Hillel, from Parathon, led Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons who rode on seventy donkeys. He led Israel eight years. Then Abdon, son of Hillel, died and was buried at Pirathon and Ephraim in the hill country of the Amalekites. Judges chapter 13. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for forty years. A certain man of Zor named Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because a boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman went to her husband and told him, A man of God came to me. He looked like an angel of God. Very awesome. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name. But he said to me, You will become pregnant and have a son. Now then, drink no wine or other fermented drink, and do not eat anything unclean, because a boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. The Manoah prayed to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord, I beg you to let the man of God you sent to us come again to teach us how to bring up the boy who is to be born. God heard Mona, the angel of God, came again to the woman while she was out in the field, but her husband Manoah was not with her. The woman hurried to tell her husband, he's here. The man who appeared to me the other day. Manoah got up and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said, are you the man who talked to my wife? I am, he said. So Manoah asked him, when your words are fulfilled, what is to be the rule that governs the boy's life and work? The angel of the Lord answered, your wife must do all that I have told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine nor drink any wine or other fermented drink, nor eat anything unclean. She must do everything I have commanded her. Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, We would like to stay until we prepare a young goat for you. The angel of the Lord replied, Even though you detain me, I will not eat any of your food. 
But if you prepare a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. Manoah did not realize that it was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah inquired of the angel of the Lord, What is your name so that we may honor you when your words come true? He replied, Why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Then Manoah took a young goat together with the grain offering and sacrificed it on a rock to the Lord. And the Lord did an amazing thing while Manoah and his wife watched. As the flame blazed up from the altar toward heaven, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. Seeing this, Manoah and his wife fell with their faces to the ground. Then the angel of the Lord did not show itself again to Manoah and his wife. Manoah realized that it was the angel of the Lord. We are doomed to die, he said to his wife. We have seen God. But it, his wife answered, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and grain offering from our hands, nor shown us all these things, or now told us this. The woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Maned Dun, between Zorah and Estatol. Amen.